how to set up and clean up for a badass microblading procedure. If you're new to my channel, my name's Christy and I'm the owner of Boss Brows. I've been in the beauty industry for almost nine years now, specializing in microblading. If you're a boss babe who wants to step up your brow game or build your empire, make sure to subscribe because I come out with new videos every Tuesday. Each state may have different regulations for your health code. However, when you are cleaning, you always want to put on a pair of gloves. Usually you'll already have gloves on and that's fine. But for right now, I'm just gonna put on a clean pair of gloves for you. Now at the end of each service, you want to throw away anything that has been contaminated. The first thing I always do is I'm gonna clean up my needles, anything that has blood on it. So I'm gonna take this needle and the needle from my machine and you're gonna throw it in your sharps container. Make sure you are wearing gloves when you do this. You do not wanna to touch dirty blades. Just pretend that whoever you just worked on has some deadly virus or disease because we really want to practice safety here. So I'm throwing these in my sharps container. So now from here, it's really easy. I'm just going to fold this over and throw this away. Anything where blood might touch, you want to line with plastic. Saran wrap works well, so you'll want to throw that away too. All the things that you wrap with your barrier tape, you're gonna take these off also and throw it away. I think the most important part is that you're wearing gloves throughout this whole process so that you're not touching anything that's been contaminated. Over here you see I've wrapped my light, so I always touch it right here, which is where I like to wrap it. When I move it, I grab it from here. So before we see our next client, you want to make sure to remove this. This one's probably the hardest one to take off right here. I don't know why, but it's really hard for me. Huh. Came off pretty easy that time. Just fold this up, throw it in the trash. Now things still aren't clean, but we want to take off these dirty gloves. So I pull one off like this. I grab the inside of this glove and pull it out like that. And now I'm not touching the outside of my gloves. Throw them away. After we've thrown everything away, we want to grab some type of cleaner that's going to kill all your germs. So I like cavi wipes. However, they're out right now. So next best thing, Clorox wipes. Or you could also use Barbicide. Barbicide comes in a big bottle of the liquid and you'll actually have to dilute it with water. So either or is fine. I like wipes, I think it's easier because I love to wear gloves all day. I'm gonna put on another pair of clean gloves now and clean all of my surfaces down. You don't wanna use the dirty gloves that you are wearing during the procedure because they may have blood on them and we don't want to clean something with dirty gloves on. So if you want to properly disinfect something, you'll actually have to wipe it down and leave the liquid on there for about five minutes. If you're not sure, it will tell you on the back how long that that disinfectant has to stay on the surface in order to actually clean it. I usually pull four out. I feel like that's usually enough. And I wipe down my bed, making sure to get the sides. A little trick, I don't know if you guys realize this, but you're actually always moving your chair and you might be touching the bottom of it. So I clean my chair. Oh, I wipe the sides and I kind of wipe the bottom also. So see how it's still wet? Don't wipe this off. Let it stay wet and let the chemicals do their magic. Then, even though this was wrapped, I'm going to clean my light everywhere I might have touched it. Then I'm gonna clean my medical tray. Make sure you do a really good job cleaning this. So I clean the top part, the surface, and then I clean the handles, the back section. And then I kind of come underneath also. And then the last thing I like to do is I like to wipe down my trash can. So even though this is a trash can with the foot pedal, so it lifts it up, 
Sometimes you may have touched it during the service, so I wipe this down as well. To remove your gloves, grab the inside, and then you can dispose of them. Now you can wipe everything down. I like to make sure it's dry because it's not clean until it's dry. The only tool that can actually sterilize anything is an autoclave. You are using tweezers, for example, on a client. You'd want to use it before you break the skin, before there's any blood. If you use the tweezers after you've broken blood or broken the skin and there's blood, you definitely would need to sterilize them. So if you don't have an autoclave, you would have to throw those tweezers away. So I'm just wiping everything down. And voila. So that is how you clean up properly for your microblading service. The first thing you want to start your service with is wash your hands. Come to a separate sink that is used just for washing hands. Don't go to the bathroom. I'm going to wash my hands, which I already did. I'm going to dry them and I'm going to glove up. I'm going to put clean gloves on. Then I'm going to wipe everything down. I'm gonna wipe my table down. I'm gonna wipe my light down. I'm gonna wipe my medical tray down. We wipe all the surfaces, even if they're clean, wipe them again to make sure they're perfectly clean. Now we can set up for our service, but since we just cleaned all of our surfaces, we need to take off our gloves, use some antibacterial, and then glove up again. I'm not gonna do that because I legit just did it for you guys, so right now, I'm just gonna show you how to set up for your microblading service. So what I do, I cover the top part with saran wrap. In different states, you may have different regulations, so make sure that you are staying up to date with the health department. They will come and check your room and make sure that you're following all proper sanitation. Then I'm gonna cover my medical tray with saran wrap. All these surfaces that I'm covering with saran wrap are areas where blood might touch it. So if you think blood is gonna get exposed to any area in your workstation, that's, that definitely needs to be covered with saran wrap. All right, then I'm gonna put a pee pad. That's what I call it. I'm not sure if that's like the medical term, but I call it a pee pad. Then again, I also have two dogs, so that's just what I know it as. So I'm gonna put a pee pad at the head area. I'm going to put our dentist bib on my medical tray. Then I'm gonna put another denti dental bib on my back bar. I like to have a back bar for things that you don't want to be on your medical tray, which normally consists of a brow pencil, anesthetics, a brow mapping ruler, my mini saran wrap. If you're going to need a razor, you can put your razor there or tweezers, any of those items. Now I'm gonna grab anything that I want on my medical tray. These are the items that I'm using the most throughout the service. When I'm first starting, I need alcohol pads. I usually use two to three. I'm also gonna put any of my disposables down, such as the lip applicator, a mascara wand, I absolutely love these. These are a microfiber brush, I believe it's called. Those are awesome. I'm also going to put a spatula on there. Then I normally put four cotton rounds, a pigment ring, a couple Q-tips, and then lastly, I'm going to put down these precise Q-tips, which these are the bomb.com for your brow mapping. If you actually need any tips on brow mapping, I have a couple videos on how to do brow mapping step by step, so you should definitely check those out. Now what we need to do is wrap everything with saran wrap. I'm going to wrap anything that I might possibly touch. I touch these two heads on my lamp. I usually put saran wrap right here because that's where I pick up my lamp from when I move it. I'm also going to put barrier film. This is barrier tape and it sticks to itself. I put it at the end of my medical tray because then I can move my medical tray. The 
only thing that I don't put on my medical tray are the needles or blades that I'm going to use because my client hasn't arrived yet and I don't always know what blade I need. As far as brow mapping, my pre-draw, that's all ready to go over here. And then all my disposables and my medical tray is ready over here. What are they called? Underpad. Underpad. An underpad. If you want to improve your brow mapping, check out this video. And if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe down here because I come out with new videos every Tuesday. That was perfect. Thanks. That was good. <laughs>